Ooh, what a beautiful sunrise here in the Smoky Mountains. Yes, I did go to my car just to get spark to put in my drink. Shh. Gotta have that caffeine, boys and girls. You'll never see a literal city like that. Not one physical in nature is made out of bricks and stones and concrete like this building is. But yet John uses terms to describe that city that make me long to be there. And I cannot imagine living in an edifice like this described in Revelation. I cannot ever imagine being, being bored with the surroundings. Words can't even capture the beauties of heaven. <laughs> Theory after we talk about the theology of social media, I'm going to talk about some theory of how you use tips. A couple guys driving a convertible sports car was on one of those curvy roads in California going up one of these hills, there's some cliffs and ravines and stuff. They looked over, they saw them two guys holding the sign that said the end is near, and the driver looked over at his pastor buddy. He said, Man, these religious fanatics are angry. He said, they're always talking about the end coming, always talking about the end being near, and Jesus coming again, or something happening, apocalyptic. They're always doing that. I don't know why. They don't just mind their own. Right when he got to about mind their own business, he drove off the cliff. The guy holding the sign looked over at his buddy. He said, you know, this isn't really working. We should probably just put bridges out. <laughs> These arguments that led me out of belief were very in nature. There isn't just one thing, one line of thinking that's going to do it. Remember, we had to kind of erase my foundation a little bit. We had to kind of show the positive case that God exists. We had to look at the Bible. We had to look at Jesus. Uh, there's not just one, you know, here's a skeleton key for unlocking atheists. That just, uh, quite frankly, doesn't exist. There was no just one thing. Likewise, good arguments are meaningless without good conduct. And when you think about 1 Peter 3.15 and what's really being told of those Christian people, that it'll always be ready to have a reason for the hope that's within them. They're doing it while sanctifying the Lord Jesus in the heart, and they're doing it in a certain way. They're doing it with gentleness. They're doing it with respect. They're doing it with Christ-likeness. And this really, because I know I sound a lot more open-minded than a lot of atheists you probably meet, but that's how I got open-minded, being around people who live that out genuinely being around people who had no reason to like me and they acted like Jesus and they loved me and they were willing to take care of me and they were my friend. Uh, and that really is what made me get to this point where I was open to entertaining the possibility that God exists, that Christianity is true. Christianity, do I treat people even when they revile me and they're mean to me and they stand opposed to everything I stand for? Do I treat them with respect? Do I treat them with love? Am I willing to invite somebody I know as a one in a million chance of becoming a Christian? What am I willing to invite them to service with or a fellowship meeting or an event at my house or whatever it may be? I think there's something all of us can do because we know people around us who are skeptical. We know people around us who are atheists. We know people around us who are agnostic. We can be the people who familiarize ourselves with these arguments. We can be the people who engage them and engage the skeptics and engage the atheists and engage the agnostics and show them what it means to really live out 1 Peter 3.15 and show them that there is a God and he makes a difference in your life. He can make a difference in the life of anybody. Woo-wee! What a long day. 
I am exhausted. So, uh, ugh, Evan and I decided we're gonna relax a little, chill, just have a nice calm conclusion. Well, basically conclusion, tomorrow will be our last day at PTP and then we have to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Evan, don't kill us as oh, you're driving us around. Oh. Yeah. Till we meet and see. There he goes. We have returned from Kroger and we actually picked up an extra traveler. And uh, Ben and I picked up some groceries and stuff, so. All good. Time to head back to the room. The room. So, just for some context, that kind of ended abruptly. Um, Evan and Ben and I all went to Kroger's. We ended up just doing that instead of doing anything else that evening. Uh, so we went to Kroger's, we picked up some groceries, got some stuff, and came back. And that was pretty much how the day ended. Conclusion to our PTP weekend. Except for tomorrow morning, but it is what it is. I still look bushed, even though it's the future. Oh, it's neither here nor there, though. I hope you guys had a good day. I've, I realize putting all these lectures in there might not be, like, you know, some entertaining vlog content, but it's a good lens into, like, what I'm doing and where I'm going because I'm at Polishing the Pulpit, and a lot of people don't know what that is. And you've just seen what it is. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Glad I could hear Forrest speak. Very, very proud of him. He's an awesome guy, and I'll miss him dearly this semester. But without further ado... Stay good.